In this world, you have to be also smart, also pleasant. Well, for years I was smart. I recommend pleasant. You may quote me. Servus Freunde, my name is Jimmy Cage and some of you already know it, but I'm going to say it once again. James Stewart is my favorite actor of all time and since this poster of Harvey has been hanging on my wall for ages now, I guess it's finally time that I talk about this wonderful American classic. Harvey is a comedy drama that came out in 1950. It was directed by Henry Costa and it's based on the 1944 Pulitzer Prize winning play of the same name by Mary Chase. Chase adapted her own story for the big screen and co-wrote the screenplay together with Oscar Broadney. Harvey is about a whimsical middle-aged man who has an invisible best friend named Harvey. And Harvey isn't just an ordinary imaginary best friend, but a six foot tall rabbit on top of that. Six feet and three and a half inches to be precise. Nobody but Elwood P. Dowd is able to see him and his family, his older sister Vita and his niece Myrtle May are assuming he is insane, which is a very likely possibility, to be honest. Like I said, Harvey could first be enjoyed on stage and was then brought to a bigger audience through the 1950 movie adaptation. In the following years or decades, there has been several television adaptations as well as different versions of the play. Elwood P. Dowd is of course played by the great Jimmy Stewart. Oh, Dowd's my name, Elwood P. Sir, let me uh, give you one of my cards. Oh, that won't be necessary, sir. Just uh, sign right here. Beautiful day. Oh, well, every day is a beautiful day. And he didn't just play him this one time, but also before in the original stage version when the role's originator Frank Fay took a vacation. In 1972 he also reprised his screen role in one of the TV adaptations and in 1975 he played the role for the last time in a stage revival in London. Stewart has said that it was his favorite role he ever played and it's easy to see why. It's a perfect fit. It's not the most demanding performance, but it's the one where Stewart can bring all of his natural charm and good-hearted nature. Elwood P. Dowd must be one of the loveliest characters in all of cinema and Stuart's presence is saving him from becoming too dopey. He plays a man who is always the most pleasant human being, always kind, always gentle. He never gets loud, never gets angry or mean-spirited. For him, every day is a beautiful day and every new encounter is a great chance to make a new friend. In an early scene he's seeing an old acquaintance at a bar and through the dialogue you can pick up that that person has spent time in jail. But for Elwood, that's no reason at all to look down on him or not share a conversation and inviting him to dinner to his home. He's just good at heart and welcomes everybody with open arms. Now normally an important ingredient for a good story is a strong character arc. Your protagonist, your hero should start at a certain point and then change over the course of the book, play, movie or whatever to then end up a slightly different, in most cases better person. But when it comes to rules there are always exceptions and I think Harvey is one of them because Elwood stays pretty much the exact same person from beginning to end. But it's the people around him that change to the better through his unique behavior. His kindness and his view on the world are inspiring and though he is considered to be crazy, people can't help but begin to admire his wonderful positive attitude towards life and take something away from it for themselves. Some characters more than others. But Harvey isn't just this sappy feel-good movie, but it's also extremely witty, poignant and perfectly paced and structured. Elements it probably adapted from the source material, but it did so in great fashion. Seeing the movie it's quite easy to imagine it happening on stage, though a quick research shows that Elwood seems to be present in all scenes on stage and in the movie it's very different and we often change to the perspective of other important characters. The whole story only takes place over the course of one day, if I'm correct, and the scenes perfectly capture the different perspectives on what's going on. The film begins with the introduction of Elwood P. Dowd and in almost exactly one minute it shows us everything we need to know at this point. Elwood is coming out of his house, he's making room for an invisible person as he walks towards the street and then he kindly greets the mailman and states that every day is a beautiful day. 
We then change the perspective to inside the house, where his older sister Vita and his niece Myrtle May are in quite the uproar. From their dialogue we learn more about Elwood and his peculiar behavior with his invisible friend and how it is scaring away all people of their social circle. Which is a big problem because Myrtle May still isn't married and they try to change that. Now those two are just a blast to watch. Who'd want me? Oh, Myrtle dear, you're sweet and you have so much to offer. I don't care what anyone says, there's something sweet about every young girl. And a man takes that sweetness and look what he does with it. The way they are delivering the words, their gestures, their body languages, it's a marvelous continuous back and forth with great comedic timing. Victoria Horn plays Myrtle May, but the one who's stealing the show is Josephine Hull as Vita. Hull not only belonged to the original cast of the play, but she also did win the Oscar for Best Actress in a Supporting Role for her magnificent performance in the movie. To see her inner turmoil, her conflict between her deep love for her baby brother Elwood and her obligation as a mother towards her daughter Myrtle May is fantastic. She's always on the brink of going crazy, of believing in Harvey as well, because she has made so many compromises in the past. Doctor, I've been telling you Harvey is a rabbit, a big white rabbit, six feet high, or is it six feet three and a half? Heaven knows I ought to know he's been around the house long enough. The main story revolves around them finally giving up and trying to bring Elwood to a mental institution. But things take a very different and very funny turn of events and the rest of the day is filled with everyone trying to make up for it. Besides Elwood, Vita and Myrtle May we are also being introduced to the psychiatrist Dr. Raymond Sanderson who starts out being an absolute cold-hearted mean man to his nurse Miss Kelly which, to be honest, is leading to some laugh out loud moments. But despite his mean behavior, Miss Kelly hasn't given up on him because deep in her heart she really loves him. Then there's the sanitarium warden, Marvin Wilson, a very rough and direct man. He has a very impactful encounter with Vita, which makes it even better that he's the man Myrtle May finds rather interesting. Hey, my name's Marvin Wilson, honey. What's yours? Myrtle May and I'm not afraid of you. They are only together in a few scenes, but a charged tension between them is yet another element that's adding to the film's great entertainment value. The ensemble of characters is completed by the head of the institution, Dr. William Chumley, Vita's close acquaintance, Judge Omar Gaffney, and some minor side characters. All of them play wonderfully off each other, and the film is constantly maneuvering between being funny and being tender, lean back and just warm. It's a tightly written script brought to life by actors and actresses who have fully committed. It is short and often very long continuous takes that give the performances the chance to really shine and again its structure and pacing is perfect. Now it is possible that some people might find it problematic that Elwood is portrayed as this inspiring, light-hearted man because you can argue that he's a. an alcoholic who spends most of his time in bars drinking and b. is mentally ill and because of that doesn't really fit into society even though he's supposedly making a lot of friends. I can definitely see that perspective and I thought about it while watching too. And of course it would be a little bit too easy to just say this is a film from 1950 based on a play from 1944, but I would argue that it clearly has a connection to the fantastical. It is a little bit like a screwball comedy meets a fairy tale. The film wants to show the importance of being nice to one another and that we shouldn't judge a person who is different simply as a lunatic because he could turn out to be a wonderful human being. And maybe, maybe he might be right after all. And this is another important argument here. There are some signs in the film that Harvey might be real after all. Of course, the film could still be criticized for portraying mental illness, hallucinations and stuff like that as something that's not really that harmful for the people who suffer from it. But the tone of the film is so light-footed and tender that I don't really care that much about this angle. And in the end, it's still a wonderful testament to classical Hollywood filmmaking and it features one of Jimmy Stewart's most iconic performances. So in German I'd say, Harvey ist ein wundervoll, fröhlicher, gewitzter und herzlicher Film. Pointiert erzählt, großartig gespielt und einfach magisch. I give Harvey 9 out of 10. It's more like 9.4. But I don't do that. Well, for you I'd do anything. I'd almost be willing to live my life over again. Almost. Alright, that's it for today. Like always, comment below and let me know what you think about Harvey. Have you seen the film? What do you think about it? And also, please let me know what is your favorite film with Jimmy Stewart. 
Normally I'm not doing reviews for older films, but I also want to upload at least two videos every week. One of them is reserved for our Indian movie reviews and sometimes it can happen that there were no new releases interesting enough for me to see and review and I think in those cases I might sprinkle in a classic movie review from time to time. But at least for now it won't become a regular thing. You of course can hit me up on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram simply at the Jimmy Cage. And if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up, share, subscribe, whatever you like and make sure you hit that bell for all I have to tell.